Okay, let's get started on paint a waterfall number two, small and fast. Add some nickel azel yellow thinly on top of the quinacridone magenta. With a palette knife or a brush, make some random marks where all the rocks will be. Really look at the photograph and decide where the darks are going to be. And if you like, you can use a color shaper to scrape into that wet paint. I've actually added quite a bit of acrylic medium called GAC 500 into the paint to make it nice and goopy. As I often do, and as I did when waterfall number one, one of my goals is to allow that background color to show through. I really don't want to cover it all up. As you add in these dark crevice marks, try to make your marks um, random and also to have the spaces between the dark lines all at slightly different intervals. This makes the painting look a little bit more natural and more pleasing to the eye. Whenever you're creating some type of line when you're painting, you can think about doing what is called a broken line. When you do broken lines, the eye fills in the space in between the, the lines that you're making and it makes the painting more interesting again. This is called creating implied lines. Notice how this thin layer of purple paint becomes dulled out by the orange that's underneath. So instead of mixing a duller purple on my palette, I'm allowing the color of the canvas to mix that paint. The color we're adding here is still in the darker family of our colors. Purple and raw umber make a great neutral color, and if you add a little bit of white, you can get these great grays. I have a pile of this neutral color on my palette, and as I go along, I add a little bit more purple to the color, just to change it up as I go through the painting. The right side cliff is just a little bit lighter than the left one, so here I've taken some raw umber and white and started to add some grays to the right hand side. Again I have a mixture of that raw umber and white and I add uh, extra bits of purple to it to add to some places. And I can also add some anthraquinone blue to make it a little bit more blue. And I can also add yellow oxide to warm it up. Where we are at the top of the cliff, there's a little bit more light hitting, so I want to warm that a little bit more than the rock cliff that is down below. So a little bit more yellow oxide on those top rocks, a little bit more blue on the bottom. At this stage, just continue with the same colors and adjust the values wherever you feel like you need to adjust, and try and keep that little bit of orangey background shining through in places. things that makes a painting interesting is contrast. We have quite gray and dark and mid-tone rocks on the cliff faces and then when we look up to the sky there's some very bright colored uh, yellow green trees and there'll be some nice blue sky shining through. This will create the contrast that we need for this painting. Adding to this contrast of light is going to be the little bit of rock that is catching the light on the uh, middle of the painting on the top of the cliff face. Anthraquinoin blue is a dullish dark blue, so when you add a bright yellow to it, it automatically becomes a nice um, natural looking green, a little bit duller, and you can brighten it up by adding white and more of the benzy yellow, or if you want to go darker, you can add more purple and have less white in your paint. While the paint is wet, scratch into it to create tree trunks. And when you're putting on the branches of the trees, move your palette knife or brush in the direction that those tree branches would grow. And you can scratch into the wet paint of the branches as well. And this way we maintain our goal of allowing that orange background to show through. Okay, it's time for the waterfall. Make sure when you're painting this part that you don't go too light. The waterfall is actually still in the shadow. So I've taken anthraquinoin blue and added a bit of white and then I've also taken purple and added some uh, white to it too. And I'm trying to do bits of that waterfall all at once so that uh, I'm working wet on wet into the paint so I can create some interesting marks. 
Once the waterfall is done um, uh, to this stage, you can add a little bits more uh, green to the side rocks beside uh, where the waterfall will be flowing. Uh, we always get that kind of mossy stuff near where there's constant water. Here's a bit of the top side cliff where it's turned uh, to the corner and some of the light that is shining through is hitting that. So this is a little bit of white plus yellow oxide and tiny bit of purple to dull it down. I want to move in to put a little bit more light onto the waterfall section. Nice thick goopy paint. For the next part of the painting, take a look at your photograph and at your painting and decide where you want to either brighten, lighten, darken, or cover more of the background. Just keep going. You might want to add some yellow to the greens. You might want to add a little bit more blue sky. Uh, you might want to get into the rocks and uh, darken, lighten, or dull areas in there as well. Continuing to uh, make some interesting marks with your palette knife or brush and using nice thick paint. Keep going. simplify the values and darken the values of this left side cliff. So I took some quinacridone magenta and GAC 500 and did a thin layer over top of that entire left side. This is nickel azel yellow placed on top of the part of the rock that has been lit up and then taking some white and nickel azel yellow to put some opaque passages on top of the glaze. The cliffs on the left side still need to go a little bit darker, so this is dioxazine, purple, and some GAC 500. I want to add a bit more thick paint on top of the waterfall and also add a little bit more of the mossy stuff on the side of the rocks. Okay, so we're pushing and pulling the values on the left hand side of the cliff. So on top of those darker passages, I'm going back to adding some darker tones, not as dark as the shadows, but just a little bit more of a, a dull violet. So by taking purple, white, and a little bit of yellow oxide, you'll create a nice uh, purpley gray. And you can add a little bit more yellow oxide as you move up towards the top of the cliff and just indicate a few edges of the rocks before they uh, meet the crevices. I think we're just about done this little six by six study of a waterfall and uh, after I put in a few more uh, uh, darker crevices on the right hand side adjusted a few more of the darks and lights I was quite happy and pleased that I had left enough of that orange background shining through. I was also happy with the energy of the palette knife marks throughout the painting. We're done! Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe for notice of new videos. Take care!